Good morning. He is risen. I hope you're chorusing. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And a very happy Easter to all of you. It's wonderful to share this time together. I'm so sorry that you're not able to come and join us in person in church at St. Matthew's today. Um, but it is absolutely wonderful to wish you a very happy Easter. And we just think about Jesus um, being risen from the tomb. And uh, when the disciples go in and they see that empty tomb and they think, what the heck has happened? We have no idea what's going on here. Somebody has stolen our Lord. And you just imagine that first time, you know, that they thought about this. What is going on? This is all totally crazy. He's gone. Where did he go? And as we know that he didn't go, he was risen, that Jesus rose from the dead in a miraculous way. This is the point of the whole of our Christian faith. Today is the day we celebrate everything that Jesus did for us, that he rose and that we're rising with him. Alleluia. So I hope you have a really great service today and we're going to sing a wonderful song together. And uh, we've got an amazing uh, sermon today as well. And it's just, it's all going to be fabulous. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these amazing people. Lord, I pray that you would be in each of their hearts today, that you'll be reminding them of your resurrection and the joy that we have in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing. Day of all days is a great day to confess our sins and to remember all the ways that we've let God down, but how we are forgiven. We are forgiven people. So let's say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We haven't loved you with our whole heart. We haven't loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. 
Almighty God, who forgives, who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we remember um, what we've been forgiven, and we remember where we're going with all of this, we now are going to have our reading and then our sermon, and we're going to respond to God because that's what it's about, isn't it? We're here for him today. The reading is Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, good morning. My name's John and I'm the Children, Youth and Families Worker here at St Matthews. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. A truism for sure, but I was so pleased this year to be able to gaze on the empty tomb with fresh eyes. Indeed, when I was first asked to do a talk about Easter, I got really excited. And those who were in church on Palm Sunday will see what excited John looks like. The King is coming. Wave your palm branches. Get really excited about Jesus. So for Easter, I had visions of walking up to the top of a hill, looking out over the city, and proclaiming, God's not dead, and encouraging us to do the same. It would have been a great message, and if it excites you, then why not try it? Indeed, I would have thought it had been very much in step with the rest of Mark's Gospel, where each instant proceeds at breakneck speed with an immediately and then as though he is desperate to get us right to that important ending as quickly as he can. Mark is leading us to the crux of the matter right at the end, but it's not quite the crescendo that I was expecting. Let's have a look at how he describes the scene and why he does it in such a way. At sunrise, we see three frightened women carrying spices heading for the tomb. The wonderful humanity of them turning to each other and asking how they were going to roll the stone away. How often do we start some, something without working out all the details? Is the lesson, do your preparation, or sometimes is it best to get going and work things out? On that day, it was the women who found out the incredible sight, not the frightened disciples in hiding who hadn't quite grasped what was happening. Wandering through Arnus Vale is quite a frequent experience for me. Seeing graves and tombs can be a relatively normal thing. What awaited the women was anything but. I don't know what I would think if an angel sat up in a tomb, told me that the dead person I was looking for was alive. I think trembling, bewilderment and afraid might just be quite a reasonable reaction.
you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And that's the message of Easter this year, to be taken back to discovering the tomb for the very first time. Now, for me, that takes me back to when I said yes to Jesus outside the tomb more than a quarter of a century ago. And so that means that I've had 25 chances to hear the story and know how it ends. I know why God dying on Friday is Good Friday. And I know that he doesn't stay in the tomb past the third day. And it's really tempting for us to get really excited and to skip ahead to that triumph. But I'm reminded again of what it was like for those women on the first Easter. It was scary. It was new. Now, if you're investigating Easter for the first time, that's my message. It's okay to have doubts. It's okay to be bewildered. Let's be honest, the Son of God coming back to life, having been killed, is mind-blowing news. This is where Mark has been leading us. Jesus, the suffering servant, came to die, and he was told about centuries before by the prophets. But there wasn't a tomb big enough or strong enough to keep him in it. And for Mark, every person who's ever been or is to come in the future needs to come face to face with that empty tomb and decide whether or not that they have the faith to believe it. Now, maybe like me, you've heard the story many times, but firstly, the message for us is still the same. It's okay to have doubts, to be bewildered, even tremble occasionally. Sometimes we just need to keep walking like those women, hoping like them that there's something incredible at the end of the journey, an empty tomb. And the second man is the me a message that the um, women received from the angel. Go and tell the disciples what you have seen. However we're feeling, however unworthy or unprepared, all we have to do is go and tell people what we have seen. My favourite moment this Easter was in the Easter eggscape room. The uh, young people designed to tell the children uh, something about Easter. And at the very end, we were rolling a stone away from the tomb. And uh, before I could say anything, one of our young guests, a small boy, turned around and went, wow, where's Jesus gone? The wonder of someone seeing the empty tomb for the very first time. That was special to me. Go and tell them all you have seen. Betrayed the sin.
precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. When the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. Now my debt is paid. It is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus did. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. The sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please will you reply, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, thank you for the joy of Easter day. Christ is risen. Death is defeated. We can live in hope because Jesus died and rose again. Your power and might are so much stronger than the things that drag us down. Father, thank you for the beauty of your creation at this time of year. For the colourful flowers and blossom which offer food to foraging insects. And for the lovely green haze on some trees as they start to come into leaf. Thank you that it fills us with hope for happy, warmer days to come. Please give us wisdom to walk lightly through your creation, that we might all enjoy it and not destroy it through our thoughtlessness or greed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for St Matt's Eco Group, for the work they have been doing in finding ways for St Matthew's Church to care for your creation. Thank you for the church garden and the pleasure it gives to so many people. Help us to use it wisely so more people can enjoy it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are struggling at this time. We especially pray for the people in Ukraine. We ask that the war will stop so that they can live their lives in peace. We pray for the many people who are grieving for family and friends who have died, that you will comfort them. We pray for the refugees seeking a safe place to live. Thank you for the many homes 
that have offered lodging and we ask that more people will open their homes, both in this country and in others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of quiet, let us pray for people we know who are finding life difficult because of bereavement, sickness or any other reason. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us collect our prayers together as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I hope uh, you've enjoyed our time together. And I hope you haven't eaten all your Easter eggs all in one go, like I once did at the age of about five. It, it didn't go well, particularly for the person I was sharing a bed with that night. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, we just thank the Lord that uh, that God gives us grace and he gives us the endurance to be patient and to uh, eat our chocolate slowly. Um, let's Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your love, for your death, but most of all, for your resurrection. Lord, I pray that today we can live lives of resurrection, that we would accept your resurrection is for us and that you rose for each one of us today. And I pray that we can live this out today and in the future. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll sing together. Have a great Easter.
to face the day In your presence all our fears are washed away They're washed away St Matthew's is a church in Kingsdown and Bristol and we love this city, we love the people of this city and we want to connect with you especially if this is your first time joining us at church. Please do send us an email if you'd like to know more about what we do or if you'd like to know more about Jesus and you don't know him already we would love to get in touch with you. Please do subscribe to this channel and find us on our website if you want to know anything more about us. Thank you so much for joining us.